I was down all the time. I never got back up. I didn't have to worry about him. All right, guys, take over. Getting ready for the third period. The Kennedy Eagles are 15 minutes away from their first state championship if they can hold on to their two-goal lead. It's 3-1. to one. Burnsville Braves hoping to mount a comeback to win their third consecutive title. Burnsville would certainly like to get off to a quick start. What they're going to have to do is try and get a way that Brett Schneider can start effectively tying up the Kennedy defenseman. He's being watched all the time by McGowan, so if they get the puck in the offensive zone, he might as well go to an area and, and line himself up beside a Kennedy player, so effectively then he's taking an extra player out of the play because McGowan is staying right with him, so he might as well go stand with the defenseman, and, and it's like one watching two and allow a four and three situation for the rest of the ice. The matchup we have seen throughout has started the third period. Brett Schneider's line against McGowan's line, and Burnsville fires it in. Can they score that early goal to spark them back? McGowan being watched by Scott Reddy. He was the Burnsville player injured late in the second period, so it's nice to see Reddy back on the ice here in the third. Number 14 for Burnsville. There's a pass broken up by Sunby. Sunby trying to slide it through for one of his teammates. Hendrickson moved in, chopped it into the corner. Brett Schneider behind the net. There's Sunby. Reddy heads for the front of the net. Kennedy clears it around the boards. Kept in momentarily by Manley. And now it deflects out and over the glass out of play. Well, Burnsville going on the attack right away, trying to free someone up. They almost had an opportunity when Brett Schneider was over on the boards with McGowan. Reddy had the puck, he and Sunby were in good position to get a chance, but the pass didn't connect. Burnsville still on the offense, they have to get something quickly. The next goal, if it was scored by Kennedy, would be disastrous because Kennedy is such a well-disciplined and strong-checking team that it would be tough to come back from. Hendrickson backhands it in the zone. Chris Lind, who has played a strong game out of the net, clears it around the boards for Joe Decker. Long pass, too far for Pittleco, and this will be icing against the Kennedy Eagles. 13-59 left in regulation time. It's 3-1 Bloomington Kennedy, and for the ninth straight year, the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament has attracted over 100,000 fans. This year's figure, 100,205. Attendance tonight, 16,540. Another highly successful tournament. Our congratulations go out to the organizers for that. And to the teams involved for putting on quite a show. Out comes Jason Miller. Miller across the line. Double team, Decker moves in to help out. And they hold it for a face. They hold it for a face. Breaking the action, we'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Out and here comes Donato. He just fires it in on Lynn. It's up on the mesh, and they'll have a face-off outside the Kennedy blue line. Jason Miller again creating an opportunity for Decker. You don't teach kids the kind of things that he has. He's got great hockey sense. He knows where people are. He knows when to move the puck. He really gets the opportunities for his wingman. Very creative center. Dave Pearson backhands it in the Kennedy territory. Lind out of that net again. He has to be careful he doesn't get trapped as Beckman comes up with it. Tries to center it and John Manuel has it for Kennedy. Manuel over the line for Big Dan Bauer, the junior. He's six foot two, 200 pounder. Bauer going after his man, and look at him crash the board, trying to come up with the loose puck. Bauer still forechecking, and he knocked the stick right out of the hand of Paul Kivy. Now Romanowski to Pearson. Pearson just got rid of it at center. Manuel was there, and clears it back in, and Bauer is trapped offside. Nothing wrong with an offside like that. When you have your man caught deep, you got control of the puck and you're going to get checked, you might as well get it in, get a whistle, because they've been out there for a while anyway. They're getting a little tired, they've got the lead, gives them time to, since they've got the last change, to effectively get on the ice who they want against Burnsville's line. And as you know, when Brett Schneider comes out, that's going to be McGowan. McGowan and Brett Schneider on the draw, and up with it comes Burnsville. Here's a lead pass for Sunby. Sunby got a shot away. Lynn the save, and the rebound goes wide, and on the mesh once again. 
with the score, Kennedy 3, Birdsville 1. This is Hockey 87 live from the St. Paul Civic Center. On that rush, Tom Hansen was hooking John Sunby. You'll see it right here. And he's getting called. Burnsville now with the opportunity they so desperately need. A power play advantage trailing by two with 12-17 to go. And the Burnsville fans start to make some noise to exude their team on. From the faceoff, it goes to Hendrickson. Granato around behind the net for Sunby. He's out there with Brett Schneider up front. Good play at the line as Warnes kept it in. Good eye hand coordination as he knocked that one out of midair. And Wernus takes a shot towards the goal. Third away. It comes to the right point. Hendrickson can't keep it in. And here comes a break. Jason Miller, Joe Decker, two on one. Miller, Decker! Big save, Dennis! What a feathery pass by Miller. What a great pass that was. Right over the stick, just laid it flat. Well, we told you they scored 10 short-handed goals, one in the tournament. They almost had their second and 11th of the year. Hendrickson brings it down at the point. Shot right on goal. There's a loose puck. Granato! And Lynn got a stick on it somehow. I think it hit the butt of his butt end of his stick. There's a shot from the point right on. Rebound! Sunday rolled it by. Great pressure by Burnsville. But now Kennedy breaks out again. It's Decker. With Miller, Decker, shooting, and that one went high. Deflected up over the net. Jason Miller was it. 46 seconds to go in Burnsville's power play. And Miller fires it in. Dennis out of the goal, clears it around the boards. McGowan has come out for Kennedy. And here goes Kivy up ahead to Steve Dahl. Dahl puts on the brakes, passes Rick wide. Nobody home, and Kennedy comes back. Marco Kreos. Out on the right wing and beating him to the puck was Dave Pearson. 19 seconds to go in the power play. Burnsville needs a goal. They're down 3-1. Puck shot into the zone. Lind out of the net. There's Cam Beckman. Lind was knocked down. He was out of the goal. And Burnsville couldn't get a shot corrected at the net. Dave Pearson with the penalty almost expired. Lind makes the stop. And they hold it for a face-off, the penalty over, Kennedy back to close point. And that's a penalty kill, although Burnsville did get an opportunity in the pass across from Granada to Sunby. It didn't connect, and then Jason Miller with a superb pass to Decker. Decker only to be thwarted by goaltender Tom Dennis. End-to-end -end action on that power play. Burnsville desperately trying to get that goal to close the gap. Trailing by two with 10-16 remaining. Well, the Braves had scored on 37% of their power play chances this year. They came close here, but they're one for six in the tournament, and that stat may haunt them. There's a shot right on, and Lynn goes down to make the stop. And right on the doorstep was Scott Reddy. It looked like that puck wasn't going to get frozen. The backhand shot taken, Scott Reddy right in the doorstep. But he wasn't able to connect. You see Brett Schneider take the backhand shot on the net. Right there, it looked like it was going to come free. Fortunately for Kennedy, it did. Well, this would normally be Thane Venix's turn and goal, but the way Chris Lynn played against Greenway last night, Jerry Peterson elected to break up his rotation and go with Lind, and Lind has certainly made Peterson look awfully good for that decision tonight. There's a pass to the point. Manley's shot was blocked, and here comes Kennedy, three on two, down the ice. It's Jason Miller, Pittlecoe's open, and he missed the pass. I think he snuck a peek, trying to find out where Dennis was, and he lost control of the puck. They tie it up for a face-off. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament.